Many people are going to think that this is a difficult question to answer without using a calculator, but actually it's pretty easy to solve. So we have one half to the one half power. So again, without using a calculator, what is the answer? Now, I'm gonna fully explain this in just one second, but before I do, I'm gonna tell you who I am. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. All right, so one more time, we have one half to the one half power. So what is this equal to? And again, we're not going to use our calculator. So let's take a look at the steps to get the right answer. So the first step is to recognize that anything to the one half power means finding the square root of this thing. So instead of one half to the one half power, this uh, expression is equivalent to the square root of one half. So this is a really critical concept. Now, if you have your calculator handy, again, we're not going to do this without a calculator. We know that the square root of four is two, but you can also go into your calculator just to kind of believe what I'm telling you. So that is to take four to the one half power. So to plug an exponent in on your calculator or to type one in, you're going to be looking for this key, which is called a caret key. It's an upside down V or maybe something like Y to the X. So what you're going to do is type in four and then maybe this caret key and then type in, use parentheses, one divided by two for one half, hit enter and you'll see the answer is two. But again, anything to the one half power means uh, just take the square root of that thing. All right, now if you understand that, you might be saying, oh, excellent, we are done. Okay, so the answer here is the square root of one half. Well, not so fast because this is not simplified. So if this is your answer, I would maybe give you, uh, oh, I might be generous and give you like a B, right? But what you wanna strive for is an A plus because we actually have a problem in mathematics with this written as it is. So the square root of one half is really not allowed. Now, what am I talking about? Well, let's get into that right now. So we have a property of square roots and that is the following. So the square root of a fraction, we have one big square root over one over two is equal to the square root of one over the square root of two. So you can write two individual square roots, one for the numerator and one for the denominator. All right, so this is a property of square roots and we know the square root of one is one, right? So really this entire expression is equal to one over the square root of two. So this looks pretty good as well, right? So we're kind of writing this simpler, but we have a major problem right here. And what is that? Well, the problem is we're trying to divide by an irrational number, and this is not allowed in mathematics. Now, let's just kind of take a look at the square root of two. Now, I don't have my calculator handy, but uh, you can plug in or type in the square root of two on your calculator. I believe it's gonna give you a decimal like 1.41, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But here's the deal. This number that's uh, that you see in your calculator is an approximation because the square root of two, the actual value, the entire decimal value of the square root two, of the square root of two is infinite. In other words, this is a non-terminating and non-repeating decimal. All these digits down here, we just don't know. Matter of fact, you might be familiar with this uh, concept with uh, the value of pi, all right? So you may think that pi is equal to 3.14. Well, this is not true. The value of pi is approximately equal to 3.14 because pi is an irrational number. And the definition of an irrational number in mathematics is a non-terminating and non-repeating decimal, okay? And another way you can think of an irrational number is that we can't express it 
as a fraction of two integers, right? So this is what the square root of two is. So if you think about it, let's suppose I had like a little uh, pizza here, and I said, hey, let's uh, divide this pizza up by four, okay, four even pieces, so we could just kind of, you know, break this up into four pieces. One, two, three, four, no big deal. But let's suppose we have our pizza here, and we want to divide it up into the, the square root of two, okay? So we want to kind of split this up into this many amounts. Well, this doesn't make sense because we don't have the actual value, right? This goes on to infinity. So yeah, we might be able to kind of split this up a little bit, but it's just going to be an estimation because this value goes on infinitely. So this idea here is that we can't divide by an irrational number, all right? So when we have a square root, like the square root of two in the, de in the denominator, we have one divided by the square root of two. We have to fix this to get this irrational number out of the denominator. All right, so let's talk about how to do that right now. So we have one over the square root of two. So if I said, hey, we're gonna take one over the square root of two and multiply it by one, what do you think the answer is going to be? Well, anything times one is itself. So if you're saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, if you take one over the square root of two and multiply it by one, well, the answer is simply one over the square root of two. Well, I would agree, okay? We're effectively not changing the value. This is what we call the multiplicative identity. So what we're gonna do is take this uh, value and multiply it by one but we're going to use a nice fancy one. So what is that one? Well, let's take a look at this uh, expression for one, the square root of two divided by the square root of two. So anything divided by itself is what? Well, hopefully you said one. But what we wanna do here is, the, is use this expression for one and not the number one. We wanna use the square root of two over the square root of two. And the reason why it's going to fix this situation with this uh, radical, this square root, in the denominator. So if you multiply one over the square root of two by the square root of two over the square root of two, which again is simply one, what's gonna happen is we're going to get rid of that square root of two, that square root of two in the denominator. So let's see how this works. So remember, when you are multiplying fractions, you're gonna multiply the respective uh, numerator numerators and denominators. So here, one times the square root of two is simply the square root of two. And here, the square root of two times the square root of two is what? Well, when we're multiplying square roots, what happens is we simply multiply the numbers underneath the square roots, these factors right here, and put it under one big square root. So the square root of two times the square root of two is equal to the square root of two times two, which is equal to the square root of four. Okay, so what is the square root of four? Well, that is two. So we took this fraction, one over the square root of two, and we had a problem here because we had the square root of two down in the denominator, but we multiplied it by one. We took this value, multiplied it by one, and now we have a new uh, number, okay? It's equivalent. But here is the deal. We have the irrational number, the square root of two in the numerator. So we're taking this number and we're dividing it by a rational number two. Okay, so this is the final answer. Now, if you got this right, I definitely now have to give you a nice little happy face and an A plus and a 100%. Matter of fact, if you were in my math class, I would probably say, Take the rest of the year off. I don't know how you got so good at math. You probably are watching that guy on YouTube. But uh, all jokes aside, that is great if you got this problem right because this is truly critical stuff that you need to know like in algebra level mathematics. Now, if you want to improve in math and you've been away from math a long time, let me give you a few suggestions. One, I have a fantastic quick uh, little mini review course for basic math. It's called my Math Foundations course. All my courses are self-paced, and I am the instructor, obviously. Now, if you want to review basic math and then get into some algebra and geometry, 
well, you got to check out my Math Skills Rebuilder course, all right? So I'm going to leave links to all these courses in the description. Now, if you happen to be in, like, say, pre-algebra, algebra 2, algebra 1, pre-calculus, geometry, whatever the case might be, or if you are preparing to take some sort of exam, like the GED, SAT, a teacher certification exam, I have a ton of other courses as well. Just go to my main website and you'll find my entire course catalog. Also, if you are a homeschooler, I have a full homeschool math program as well. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.